All right, guys, well, here is the Ibanez Les Paul rebuild. As you can see there, I have the new bridge and tailpiece. I have the old bridge there for comparison. Definitely needed a new, uh, a new bridge in there. Uh, the pickups are really oxidized, but they do work. Um, the when we open it up you can see the interior is actually in pretty good shape it's really the exterior as you can see here that was just really really oxidized you know, if we take a look at this even that switch there so uh, I've already started to um, don't go by these. This is very, very early in on a uh, on a fret polishing process, but I think I'm on step one of like 12, so it'll take a while, but when I'm done, it should be pretty nice. Uh, the frets do have some indentations. Um, there should be enough meat there to work with. I'm not, I'm not worried about it, so it, it's coming along, but it will take a little bit um, if you haven't followed my my Facebook or Instagram you haven't seen these I have the DiMarzio super distortions uh, to go in here again just, this is just to match the guitar I owned in 1980 which uh, was an Ibanez Les Paul very much like this one uh, but it had um, DiMarzio Super Distortions in it, and uh, the black speed knobs. So that's one cool thing, is this, this does have the black speed knobs. You can see the flake from the guitar case. That case is really shedding a lot of its, um, you know, a lot of its material uh, onto the guitar. Yeah, it's a shame about the pickups. Um, they look, wait till you see the interior, they, they do look nicer than they would look from the exterior. I could probably replace the tops. In fact, I'll maybe I'll, I'll even look into that. But um, for now, I'm going to go with the with the super distortions. And uh, later on, I could always change these out and go with um, you know uh, new covers. Uh, you can get a set of Lindy Fraylin covers for about forty bucks, and they. Uh, really nice big beefy but you know I, these are soldered on so you have to you know get rid of the solder which is easy enough but it's still it's just one more step and you know the super 70s are nice but I kind of like the sound of those super distortions and again I did not have the original pickups in mind when I was a kid I did have the super distortions so I think that's the that's the feeling uh, if you want to just take a quick look around the bench here, we've got, um, you know, uh, soldering irons. I love this uh, soldering iron here, the, uh, the Hacko. Hacko, Hacko. Um, these, are, uh, these are amazing. I could get it to focus right here. I guess I can't. You know what I'm saying. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. All right, right there. I got a 25 watt. Those are Japanese made, as you can see, and um, they're really, really good. Uh, this is um, a remover. This is to take solder out. A little bit of furniture polish. Well, this is a wax. Um, I, I use this very rarely for guitars, but once in a while. Uh, it, it, that's really used for windows, believe it or not, when I try to free up some jammed windows. That wax actually really works good to, to free up window jams. And these are just the tools that are on the bench. Obviously, I have a lot more tools in the back. 
some more stuff. Again, I used this a little bit. Feeding wax. Not really, though. That's really for furniture more than guitars. But I'll use it a little bit. This is a... Um, Again, this is just happens to be what, what's out here with some tools. This is a torch, uh, but I have the um, I have the glow on it, the glow plug, so that it uh, is it going? No, it's going to work. That's enough. Oh yeah, there it goes. See. <laughs> Booyah. That's good for like shrink wrapping stuff. You know, whatever. GHS guitar gloss. Some masking tapes. And tuner. I like these brushes a lot. Different stiffness. So that's the stiffest one, the steel. And then uh, this is the lightest one, the plastic. And then there's, oh yeah, right here. There's like a brass in between. That's like a medium thickness. Depends on what you need it, what you need it to do, and whether you can tolerate it scratching or not scratching. This is my Fret Guru file, which I love. And this is the, like the best Fret file on the market, I think. And that's it. I put this uh, bumper on the front. It helps keep, um, you know, parts from falling off, and it helps protect the guitar. Uh, same here. I had to cut this away, and so to cut that away, uh, so I wouldn't bump it with the guitar. And uh, the same here. Just put a little squishy on there, and then I opened a couple of them up. Oh, you can see that. And put them under there. And that helps keep it from banging on the table. So there you have it. There is the bench. And tools and crap. More crap. <laughs> More crap up there. I don't know if you ever use one of these. Oh. Oh, these are the best. You know. You got to use that if you want to do a precise job. This one even has a has a little light on it. Oh, pretty cool. And some extra pickups, some dowel rods, more pickups, uh, leftover trim junk, uh, GoPro camera parts, spare containers of crap and stuff and some rosin and um, oils uh, if you've ever used these silicone cups they work great I also use the silicone pads because if you've ever worked with anything I think they're over here yeah they're like so non-stick and they can take super high temperature so for soldering those silicone pads are awesome because um, the solder can drip right on it and yeah, it doesn't ruin it. So again, more pickups, a couple of Duncans in there, some trim arms, some pads, and more, more stuff. Some needle files, like right there. Needle file. All right, guys. Well, this is the. This is the. Um, the Ibanez Rebuild. I'm getting there. A little bit. A little bit of flux. Some goof off, which is basically like goo gone. I like goof off better. Than goo gone. And that, that's just mineral. That's just mineral oil. That's it. Alright guys, 
Well, I'll see you in a little bit and we'll see how far along this has come. Until then, rock on. <laughs>